Hello everyone, welcome to the seventh video of the video series on ABG analysis. In this video, we'll look into some early steps used in interpreting ABG report. This slide shows the overview of what we will learn in this video. So let's get going. Before moving on to the actual approach to ABG analysis, let's recap what we learned in the previous video. In our previous video, we have seen why it was important to check the authenticity of the ABG report. For that, we used henderson hasselbalch equation to check whether the pH measured by the ABG analyzer matches with the calculated pH which we derived through henderson hasselbalch equation using bicarbonate and carbon dioxide. Please check this video too. Now, to systematically analyze acid-base disorders, we start by looking at the pH to figure out if the patient is acidemic, alkalemic, or in the normal range. Then we identify the primary disorder, whether it is respiratory or metabolic, by examining how the pH, PaCO2, and bicarbonate levels relate to each other. If it turns out to be respiratory issue, we then check whether it is acute or chronic by comparing the actual pH change to the expected compensation. For example, in acute respiratory acidosis, the pH drops about 0.08 units for every 10 mm mercury increase in PaCO2, while in chronic cases, it only drops around 0.03 units because the kidneys have time to compensate. Next, we assessed whether the compensation is appropriate. If it is not, that might point to mixed disorder. Keep in mind, respiratory disorders are compensated by kidneys adjusting bicarbonate while the metabolic disorders are compensated by lungs adjusting carbon dioxide through changes in breathing. And if you are dealing with metabolic acidosis, we calculate the anion gap to figure out what kind of acidosis it is. We'll go deeper into each of these steps later in this video. Step 1 in interpreting acid-base disorder is to determine whether the patient is acidemic or alkalemic by assessing the pH value. A normal arterial pH ranges from 7.35 to 7.45. If the pH is less than 7.35, the patient is considered acidemic, indicating an excess of hydrogen ions or deficit in buffering capacity. In terms of blood gases, this reflects an excess of carbon dioxide, a volatile acid or a deficiency of bicarbonate. Conversely, if the pH is greater than 7.45, the patient is alkalemic, which reflects a relative deficit of hydrogen ions or an excess of buffering component. This corresponds to either a reduction in carbon dioxide or an increase in bicarbonate. Step 2 involves identifying whether the acid-base disturbance is respiratory or metabolic in origin. For this, first we note the direction of pH change. Acidosis will reduce the pH and alkalosis will increase it. Once we know the direction of pH change, the next step is to identify which parameter, carbon dioxide or bicarbonate, is responsible for the observed change in pH. My preferred approach is to start by looking at the pH and PaCO2. If they move in opposite direction, for example, if pH is low and PaCO2 is high or pH is high and PaCO2 is low, then it's a primary respiratory disorder. This is because carbon dioxide behaves as an acid. It reacts with water to form carbonic acid, which then dissociates to release hydrogen ions. Therefore, if carbon dioxide level rise and pH falls, or if carbon dioxide levels fall and pH rises, the disturbance is due to a respiratory cause. If there is no clear opposite relationship between carbon dioxide and pH, 
Then we check whether the bicarbonate is changing in the same direction as pH. If bicarbonate moves in the same direction as pH, it suggests a primary metabolic disturbance. This is because bicarbonate is a base and its concentration directly affects the pH. When bicarbonate falls, pH falls and when bicarbonate rises, pH rises. So they always move together in the same direction in metabolic disorder. We can also use the mnemonic ROME or ROME to remember this relationship. However, if pH, carbon dioxide and bicarbonate do not follow the ROME pattern, it suggests a mixed acid base disorder, incomplete compensation or an early disturbance before compensation begins. The third step is to determine whether the respiratory disturbance is acute or chronic. This distinction is important because the body responds differently depending on the duration of the disturbance. Acute respiratory disturbance occur rapidly due to a sudden change in CO2 levels while chronic respiratory disorders develops gradually allowing the kidney to compensate for the change. So in acute respiratory disturbances, the blood pH changes significantly by about 0.08 units for every 10 mm Hg change in CO2 levels. This relationship can be expressed with this formula. In chronic respiratory disorders, the pH change is much smaller, only about 0.03 for the same change in CO2 levels because over time, the kidneys adjust bicarbonate levels to maintain a near normal pH. To confirm whether the respiratory disturbance is acute or chronic, we can also cross-check the expected change in bicarbonate levels alongside the pH shift. In acute respiratory acidosis, bicarbonate rises only slightly by about 1 millimole per liter while in acute respiratory alkalosis, it falls by 2 millimole per liter reflecting the body's limited initial compensatory capacity. In contrast, Chronic respiratory disorders show more pronounced bicarbonate adjustment due to renal compensation, rising by 4 millimole per liter in acidosis or dropping by 5 millimoles per liter in alkalosis. Distinguishing acute from chronic respiratory disorders is essential for proper treatment and management. Acute cases develop suddenly and demand urgent intervention as the body hasn't had time to compensate. Chronic cases progress gradually allowing renal adaptation so they require different management. Clinically, patients tolerate chronic imbalances better than acute ones. From the treatment point of view, acute cases need management of ventilatory parameters to correct arterial CO2 levels while chronic cases focuses on addressing the underlying cause and medications to manage symptoms. Step 4 involves checking for the appropriateness of the compensation. For respiratory disorders, we apply the 1245 rule we have seen earlier. In acute respiratory acidosis, the bicarbonate level should increase by approximately 1 millimole per liter for every 10 millimeters of mercury increase in CO2 above the normal. If the rise in bicarbonate is less than this, it suggests an additional metabolic acidosis. In chronic respiratory acidosis, the kidneys have more time to compensate, so bicarbonate should increase by about 4 millimoles per liter for the same carbon dioxide elevation. A smaller increase would again indicate incomplete compensation. Respiratory alcoholysis follows the same principles. The acute form shows bicarbonate decreasing by roughly 2 millimole per liter for every 10 millimeters of mercury decrease in CO2, while chronic version demonstrate a more substantial decrease of about 5 millimoles per liter due to renal adaptation. If bicarbonate levels do not drop as much as expected, this may point to a coexisting metabolic alkalosis. So in all these scenarios, if the compensation is not appropriate, we need to suspect mixed disorder. The expected level of bicarbonate change due to compensation can also be calculated with the mathematical formula.
Here I have given a formula for calculating the compensation for acute respiratory acidosis. We will practically revisit all these concepts with clinical case scenarios in the next video. For metabolic disorders, we use different compensation rules. Metabolic acidosis triggers respiratory compensation through hyperventilation where for every 1.2 mmHg reduction in CO2, bicarbonate reduces by 1 millimole per liter. Mathematically, we can predict the expected CO2 level using Winter's formula. If the actual CO2 is higher than this calculation predicts, it suggests the respiratory system isn't compensating adequately, possibly due to concurrent respiratory acidosis. Further, upon detecting metabolic acidosis on ABG, we need to further check for anion gap and delta ratio which we will discuss in our subsequent videos. In metabolic alkalosis, the respiratory system should compensate by slightly increasing CO2 levels typically about 7 tenths of a millimeters of mercury for every 1 millimole per liter increase in bicarbonate. We can use this formula too. If the CO2 doesn't rise as expected, this may indicate additional respiratory alkalosis. Importantly, the body's compensatory mechanism never overcorrects the pH. If values such as overcompensation, we should question the measurement or consider that we might be missing some part of clinical picture. The time frame also matters greatly as renal compensation takes several days to reach its full effect while respiratory compensation begins within minutes. That's all for this video. In our next video, we'll see some case examples and use the concept we have learned to analyze the ABG results.